I wanted to say thank you again for tuning in to another wonderful episode of the Faux Song Elizabeth Cookie Show. I am the CEO and Mistress Secretary of Goddesses Incorporated and the ultimate anime mascot goddess covering mostly all things of women of the Basojo Senshi universe, women of fighting video games, and women of anime. I wanted to say I had a wonderful Thanksgiving. And I hope all of you out there who's been watching my show have a wonderful Thanksgiving as well. Um, <clears throat> sorry for such of the late upload um, the very last day in November. Because as we know, tomorrow is actually going to be December 1st. And um, as of season three, I promised that I would be uploading one episode a month at the, towards the last week of each month. This month has been very hectic due to the holiday season between Black Friday um, and getting myself ready for the end of the year. And for next year's... Um, plans that, I, that I'm going to do. Um, there's going to be major changes in my show um, as um, I will bring season four back in March, but also with greater video editing and um, new anime reviews, new life lessons learned in reality, and now really bringing back my video gaming strategies. That was one of the things I wanted to actually do with season three, but um, I didn't have the video editing um, power at the time. Um, I've been so busy this year working out a number of circumstances, and so when I do season four, I'll really able to put in the time, the effort, um, and the substance behind a lot of the um, gaming strategies that I'm going to do. Bishojo style, of course. All female characters coming from me, um, and nothing, nothing more, nothing less, um, with um, greater value, greater substance, and um, great depth. So um, it'll be professionally done, and so that with commentary on these characters, especially um, this comment goes to the last person who sent me a nice message on YouTube wanting me to redo one of my Elena videos with actual footage um, and movements done in real life, which is another story. Um, which will go into my gymnastics series for those who want to learn how to do acrobatics but cannot pay to have lessons done, how to safely do it without injuring yourself. <coughs> Moving on and getting on to my anime review of this month, it is called Grenadier. Grenadier, which I have right here, I will show you. Grenadier, the lovely warrior. See right here, rediscovering old um, OVA animes. This is, of course, a Bishojo animation. Um, for those who don't know, Grenadier um, is the name of a title that's used within the anime to um, announce the most strongest um, senshi female. Um, senshi, in this case, meaning a soldier um, who can stand above the rest amongst all female warriors, um, according to this animation. I will get into depth in one second. This is released by Anime Works. Um, this was released about maybe six years ago. <laughs> um, it is um, not old, but it's not new. It's fairly in between. And um, the story goes like this. Um, Yajiro Senjura is this guy who is um, a military captain who is fighting a civil war in Japan who is trying to recapture his lord who got usurped by another military leader. Within this mission and within his, um, yes, within this mission for him to get back his lord that got captured by the enemy hands, there's this lovely warrior named Rushina who comes from the capital of Japan who was taught how to weld a um, a sniper gun, but chooses to use a revolver that only holds eight bullets. <clears throat> um, given that fact, Rushina and her amazing skills uses eight bullets to take out many enemy hands at one time while reloading in a flash, similar to um, Cutie Honey, who transforms in a flash while only showing um, very snippets of her breasts. So there's the, um, the fan service for people. Um, Rushina's big mission is to change the wars that happened throughout Japan by um, stopping the war with the concept of only showing people a smile. So through nonviolence and a smile, she plans to stop and create peace throughout all of Japan, only to find out this is generally not the case. And as she goes on her mission, she gets tied with Yajiro Senjura as they team up to stop 
um, the main villain with this it, that is going on within the backdrop of this series. Um, I don't want to reveal too much of the series. It is a very good series. Um, it is one of the um, rare gems, I would like to say, that has not been discovered um, by too many fans of the Bishojo world. And so Grenadier, you'll find out as Rushna comes towards the end of her quest, is a title that she is given by the most highest um, female lord at the time. Um, of course, we know there were no female lords of Japan, but in this case, there's a female lord um, who gives her this title for being able to outwit, outsmart, and outdefeat all of the um, assassins that are sent to take not only, not only her out, but her partner out at the same time. Um, I'm going to leave it like that, released by Anime Works. The opening and ending themes are wonderful. I'm a, I was a big fan of Grenadier before I even had a chance to watch the anime. Um, you can find the themes music and also the insert music um, on gendo.com. I'm Grenadier, here it is again, released by Anime Works. Uh, I am an original holder of this series right here. <coughs> Check that out. Um, you may also look that up on YouTube, of course, as well, as well as all his um, previous works by Anime Works. Grenadier, great anime series, great OVA, 12 episodes. So normally right now I would do my video game review, but this month there is no video game review. This month I call it a blast from the past. I'm taking a quick look into some of the greatest things that made the 90s the best. Not anime, but just services of the internet world and of the world of media. And so, the blast from the past 90s, I'm starting with Napster. For those who remember, Napster at the time was the god of the music world. Napster was um, a downloadable agent at the time before P2P um, servicing was around on on the world of the internet um, and before torrents existed um, we were able to use downloading agents such as Napster to go and share music for free but then of course Napster um, got hit up by a very powerful lawsuit um, by music companies and by um, the federal courts for interfering with market sales and of course Napster lost but didn't lose t totally and was able to redefine um, how they did business on the net so that people would start paying for their services. But of course, after that was done, the kind of depth and the kind of um, interface that Napster was using before the lawsuit would never be the same again as people would try to download the same kind of music and found out that what, they, what we could use to find back in the early 90s, um, we couldn't find anymore because the quality of Napster's file sharing and um, file downloading distribution interface um, significantly was um, destroyed. Um, given that fact, I just wanted to give tribute to Napster. For those who remember Napster um, and its great ability for people to share music all over the world, especially rare, hard to find music, there was just a lot of anime music, um, a lot of video game music, and the quality was great. And going back in time and remembering Napster, I can remember how they would even have the files separated by quality by a green light, a yellow light, and a red light. And it even it told you the power of how fast it would download versus um, the power on how great you could not be able to download that file on the frequency between that. Um, I miss those days um, of Napster and those who were around to experience the glories of Napster during the early, mid, and late 90s before their shutdown by the federal government um, will also agree with me that they were able to find rare and hard to find music in general. This doesn't just stream across the anime and video gaming universe, but also just the world of reality um, and the music industry from all cultures, Asia um, and Europe and America and so on. The next thing I wanted to touch on was um, Blast from the Past in the 90s on my list here is Audio Galaxy. They were the, pre uh, the, the predecessor of um, Napster. Um, they, their program allowed you to download a satellite and the satellite would beam into wherever the music file um, could be located and you would be able to download it um, at the time, of course with Napster 2 at the time. 
we weren't um, running Ethernet, but we were running um, 14, 28.8 um, K modems. And even then, waiting for those downloads and waiting and waiting, um, Audio Galaxy also helped redefine the music downloading um, um, uh, um, content at the time, the era of that moment, as um, it did bring us into Ethernet. Um, and the satellite actually worked well. Um, for those who were not able to experience Napster and was able to experience Audio Galaxy, it was the the next best, greatest thing. Um, side to side, also touching on WinMX, WinMX Audio Galaxy. Audio Galaxy forced you to download this satellite, which allowed you to get the file from where from wherever it was being streamed. And WinMX um, allowed um, for people such as myself and everyone else in the anime world to get specific files from um, Asia, especially China, Japan, and Korea. WinMX had some special interface that allowed you to put in kanji, you know, and, um, and Chinese hanzi, and, um, and um, Korean hongo to um, have greater and better um, redefine your searches to find that type of music. Um, yes, Audio Galaxy and Winamex, um, really entering the world of Ethernet for laptops and um, home desktop um, systems, computers, being able to um, download your music faster and better and more efficiently. Moving on, oh yes, I'm sure everyone will agree with me, Like Sang, likesang.com was a, a Chinese distributor of um, Japanese and Korean and Chinese products and of the anime and video gaming community. Like saying, doors would close um, shortly right before the release of the Nintendo Wii because they were um, um, filed a lawsuit by Sony. Um, Sony sent their people after them. And for a while, I found out Like Sang, L I K S A N G dot com, was in a war with Sony for quite some time as they did their best to defend themselves um, in their licensing um, distribution um, of not only their PSP models and also of um, certain video games that they sold. Um, and also modifications to people's um, systems that wanted to play out of region games. Um, unfortunately, like saying, lost the battle with Sony and they were forced to close their doors. Um, more information on them can be found on wikipedia.org. But um, for all those who had pre-ordered the Nintendo Wii at the time, had their pre-order shut down because like saying, had to not only refund people back their money, um, but also had to um, face a hefty fine um, after losing the battle um, against um, Sony Japan. Um, for all of us who could not normally get pre-orders with PlayAsia or YesAsia.com, like saying was a, um, was a wonderful um, sub subsidiary um, and an option to getting um, um, your pre-orders, um, um, your, your products through another distribution site is what I'm getting towards. Yeah, like saying closed its doors. Very sad um, for those who remember. Just putting a moment of silence out for them. Um, moving on, I'm also going to touch really briefly, um, Nobody Beats the Wiz. Um, they came before Best Buy. They were one of the greatest media um, between technology, um, CDs, DVDs, anime, distribution stores um, that have ever lived on the East Coast before they were bought out by Best Buy. <laughs> Um, Circuit City was another one. Um, not too big on anime, but big on technology. Um, at the time, some of their best laptops to buy from Circuit City was Alvara Tech. Um, like I said before, Best Buy. Um, Circuit City was also um, there, competitive with Nobody Beats to Wiz and also PC Richards. Great giants on the East Coast. Um, if I'm right, PC Richards is still around holding on to their last bit of threading at the moment and um, making what little sales that they can. Um, also, great internet giants of the 90s. Just putting it out there for those who remember. Skyfire's Sailor Moon page. Skyfire's Sailor Moon page. Sailor Jupiter Resource Center. Although they're still around, they seem to be just a shell and a lot of empty links. 
emux.com, emux.com, a site for downloading video gaming and um, arcade ROMs at the time before they're shut down. Plasticman.com, one of the greatest video gaming ROM sites to ever live. Um, sadly was shut down at one point towards the end of the 90s, very close to Bleem. Those who remember Bleem, you was able to play PlayStation games on your computer before um, the PSX and all the other um, um, PlayStation and PlayStation 2 emulators at the time. Vim's ROM Abyss. If I'm right, they're still around, but they're not highly kicking as they used to during the early, mid, and late 90s. These are just a, um, a handful of um, distribution um, labels, um, internet sites, um, creators of um, some of the greatest movements in um, modern media to be able to not only distribute, for, if not for free, but at great prices during the early, mid, and late 90s that all um, met their end either because they were shut down by lawsuits or by um, changes in uh, media laws or because um, the great economic crisis um, of 2008. Just um, running right through them again, Circuit City, PC Richards, Nobody Beats the Wiz, Audio Galaxy, Napster, Likesang.com, um, WinMX, Vim's ROM Abyss, Plastic Man, EMUX.com, Skyfire Stella Moon Page, Stella Jupiter's Resource Center, and one I may not forget, um, iMesh, even though iMesh is not all that great in their round, and also their share. For those who remember the wonderful 90s of those times, holla. And now moving on to my life lesson, which will also conclude episode 8, season 3 of the Full Song Lesbeth Cookie Show. Today's lesson is called The Nerd versus The Geek. Now, what does that mean? The nerd versus the geek. Now, not too long ago, back when Street Fighter 4 was released um, for PS3, um, I was writing some blogs on SureYouCan.com. I don't go on to SureYouCan.com that much anymore unless I'm looking for the, um, the nearest tournaments in the Bay Area here in California. But I wrote a couple of blogs under my title, God is Fo Sung, um, on the SRK forums about characters that would appear, reappear, not appear, and what would be a continuation of the storyline of the Street Fighter IV series, a, pre um, a prequel to three, but a sequel to two. Um, of course, my blog was slammed by people online who are so-called diehard fans of um, the gaming universe, but really don't have true knowledge um, or facts of gaming storylines or Japanese at all. And so when I was thinking of that, it made me think of what is the nerd versus the geek. And here we go. The nerd is somebody who hides behind forums, who writes and slams other people's blogs, has nothing but opinions to say on other people's distributed work, but never really acts on their own intentions. Aha, the geek is somebody who gets paid to do what they do. The geek is somebody who gets paid to write for forums, to write for video game sites, and to get paid to create what it is that they love to do. So when we go deeply into the nerd versus the geek, the geek is somebody who is actually taking the time, who has made an economy for themselves, I repeat, has made an economy for themselves, who has some type of cash flow coming in, and who is actually being respected for the things that they have to say, because what they have to say is coming off with not only intellectual value, it is sound, it is vivid, and it makes some kind of sense, versus the nerd who would rather stay home all day and actually disrespect, and this also goes back to my episode on haters, on other people's work and projects. The nerd knows not how to make an economy for themselves, but would rather make fun of somebody else's shit. Now, how many of us has ever seen a nerd out there who, who not only is, is social, socially inept, but cannot present their argument soundly with any kind of reasoning or backing up to what they have to say? And not only will they argue their point to the ends of the earth, 
at the end of the day, they still live at their mama's house. Now, all of you out there on the back of this camera lens can agree with me that they've ran across some type of nerd like that here and there and everywhere. And they're all over the net. And I've even met a number of these nerds who have put slams not only on my blogs but also on my videos. Newsflash. The nerd who does this does not get paid. And until they are actually making an economy for themselves, they cannot elevate in status to become what they call the geek. As much as most of us may not like G4 TV or um, most of the tech shows that show up on, um, on the sci-fi channel, I can attest to the fact that they do have some sound knowledge to what they're talking about and they are backing it up. Therefore, they are making an economy for yourself. And then once your hobby becomes a career or a job, then you are still a nerd. So to become a geek, you must somehow be doing, aka, what you love to do. And once you are being paid to do what you love, then baby, you have become a geek and a paid geek at that, not a nerd. On that thought, I want to say thank you to the YouTube network for allowing me to start monetizing my videos. I'm now able to put ads on my videos, which means at some point, I guess I have elevated to a mini nerd, or I guess, well, a mini geek in this case, being able to make a small little economy for myself for being able to release the things that I love to do out there to the world of the anime and to the video gaming universe, while also being able to teach also what I love to do, gymnastics, acrobatics, putting real life martial arts in perspective from the anime and video gaming perspective. Say cookie. <laughs> Okay, now I gotta find my, rem where my remote go, child? Oh, Lord, Jesus Christ.